Hey guys, it's Lauren here. I'm popping in today to share a beautiful layout with you. Do you like it? Look at that. <laughs> I have been challenged by, the, well, this layout is a part of the Hip Kit Club design team and my commitment to them. And I was challenged to use the September kits embellishments, but I thought I'm going to amp it up and I'm going to use the papers out of the September kits as well. And to do a layout that is Halloween themed and using all those beautiful goodies that you see there. So I thought, okay, there's some new cut files in the up over on the Hip Kit Club site. And if you're a subscriber, you can access all of the new ones. But I think if you're not a subscriber, there's still some free ones that you can go and access over there as well. So I, I, um, I suggest that you click on the link below and pop over to the website and I'm not sure if these two are part of the free ones for everyone but they may just be and you've got this really cute little spooky boo one with the uh, spider web there and you also have one that says beautiful life and it's all sort of integrated into one but I've just modified it by snipping off a few bits so I got beautiful not beautiful life <laughs> so I had this little photo shoot with Katie the other day Katie recently had all her hair cut off and donated to um, an organization that makes wigs hair into wigs for people who are uh, living with an illness that has caused their well their treatment has caused their hair loss so Katie's beautiful golden locks are now on their way to be transformed into a wig for someone who may need it and so we had a little photo shoot beforehand to sort of celebrate her hair and we were out kind of near the beach and then we found this kind of spooky property <laughs> It was really weird. It's sort of in the middle of nowhere and there was this wrought iron gate there. It was all rusty and there was vines growing through it and it was really creepy and I knew that if I added a black and white filter it would get extra creepy and I thought, oh, this is the photo that I'm going to use for this layout coming up now. But because it wasn't actually a typical Halloween theme, I thought I'm going to pretty it up a little bit and sort of use some other other elements just to sort of have that balance between a really spooky layout and a pretty girly layout. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm using some beautiful papers from the Dear Lizzie collection and though and I fussy cut some of those gorgeous flowers that you've seen me use on a layout and a couple of weeks ago. And I'm just gonna layer this up and build it like my normal technique is which is building clusters and um, adding a little bit of mixed media to it so here I am just double mounting my my photo which is nice and I ruffle up those edges really just to emphasize the border but because I'm limited I, this cut file is quite large I'm limited with my space I really want to keep that as um, that border as small as possible so I've just made it a really skinny one there and um, and I've also gessoed my my background paper there now in hindsight I should have stuck the gessoed piece of paper on to the background before gessoing it because it kind of buckled a bit there so I I sort of it, it's not too bad at all and like right now I'm looking at the layout and it's completely fine and flat but it did make adhering the two pieces of paper a little bit more tricky so my suggestion is adhere them down if you wanted to do a border effect like I've done first then apply the gesso so then it's all one and it works it works together so it, if it is going to lift a little it'll lift as one um, and I think um, in hindsight that's what and that's what I, I should do. So in the October kits, we've got these gorgeous Lindy Stamp Gang. Um, it's like the magical powders that we get in the colour kit. But these ones are called um, 
starburst sprays. So all you do, it's got the powder in there and then all you do is add water and fill it up to the line that's sort of indicated on the side of the bottle. Give it a good shake, wait 10 minutes, let sort of, I guess, the pigment settle and then you're ready to go. But as you can see, I've just poured a little bit out and I'm using it like I would use the powders. And I'm just you know, filling my brush, letting letting the brush soak up the fluid and sort of rolling the brush around. That's the, that's sort of the way I tend to do it. I sort of soak up the brush like it's, it's quite a hairy brush. <laughs> I soak it up and then I kind of just let the fluid kind of be pushed out of the brush, if that makes sense. And that sort of gives me that kind of rolly, cloudy, Look, all, the, all those technical terms, you must be astounded by my technical knowledge, the rolly. <laughs> anyway, so I just want to add a little bit of mixed media, A, because I was really busting to play with the sprays, and B, because I know that what the sprays do is give me a layer behind my photo or my cluster or my cut file that isn't bulky but helps transition from the background into the main cluster that's there. So I'm really falling, as you can see, if you go back on the layouts I've done in recently, and then if you, even if you look at my Instagram page, all my layouts are on there, you can see that I've really fallen in love with the use of mixed media in this way. And I think it's so, in, so important to um, be mindful of your layering. Instead of getting those really stark lines, um, well, that that's a beautiful look. Having really clean pages is a really beautiful look. But at the moment, my flavour is just to get a little bit messy. And I found that it really um, helps my transition from that background into my cluster or highlighting my photo there. So um, I encourage you that if you are a Hip Kit Club subscriber or you have mixed media products in your stash, give it a go. Just have a little bit of a play. You can um, remember to, if you're using cardstock like this, which is um, I think one of the Dear Lizzie ones, you have to apply gesso. And I would even suggest maybe applying two coats of gesso because the gesso is the platform it is the it's the layer in which the product will sit on top and not soak through your page because if we put that much liquid on just the page without any gesso it would just buckle and soak in and it probably rip and start to fluff up so the gesso is like that barrier to protect your page and allows your product to sit on top of it I hope that makes sense. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. Now, here I am. I'm just building more layers around my photo because I really, in all this lovely embellishment and cut file and mixed media, I don't want to lose what the the intention is of this page and that it is to highlight Katie and this little moment that we were having. And so I really want to make sure that stands out. So I'm using the colours that are in the flowers and I'm trying to incorporate and think about, um, sorry, my throat, I'm not well, I'm coming down with something and I've, I've got a cup of coffee here that I thought I'm going to have a quick sip of coffee and see if I can get my throat to work. And it's clearly failing on me now. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm having a look at all the colours in my embellishments that I'm wanting to use and I'm trying to tie more of that in. I'm trying to keep it all coordinated um, as well as give a bit of a girly feel, not too scary feel, <laughs> if that makes sense. Now, I thought I've got this really white cut file and no other white anywhere else, really. So I thought I need to sort of help the cut file settle into the page as well. So just using some watered down white acrylic paint, I've just, well, it's, it's like a 50-50 ratio. I'd put 50% acrylic paint in and top it up with 50% water and mix it up really well. And that allows me to have... Um, use it as a, a spray or a medium um, on my page and it just settles that really strong colour down in the background but also helps bring in some white to match the cut file. So, And you'll also see me when I'm adding some final embellishment touches, I'm looking for some white things just to sort of balance the page out. Katie is, uh, you know, it's a very dark photo. It's like bl the black and white 
is, um, and I added some filters to make it more spooky like. <laughs> so it's very dark, which is why I felt it important to do a dark border. I'm looking for um, complementary dark things to even out the layout, if that makes sense. So if I'm putting a green thing on one side, I want to make sure there's a couple of other little areas where there's a green thing. And if I'm look, you know, and if there's some blue things, I want to make sure I've got some blue things in random spots as well um, around the page. So as you can see, I've got an orange frame there that's quite strong. I've put another frame down the bottom and over there um, on the third O is that flower and it's got that pop of orange there. So as you can see, I've tried to balance out my colours and I'm thinking about that, that um, the spider's web and the boo wording there that's a very white cluster and you'll see me I've got a little flower in the end and I try and position it somewhere see here I am trying to sort of calm down that that big block of white and you'll see shortly I'll put a little flower there um, that will sort of do that job for me but as like I'm not intentionally doing that I, I think I'm just going with the flow of what I think feels right but when I here I am adding a white element see I need to pull in some white things just to make it transition well um I, I tend to I like I'm not thinking oh I'm putting three elements on here of this color or that I'm just going with what I feel right what feels right and what I tend to intuitively kind of that guides my uh scrapbooking but when I look back on it, that's what I tend to have found that I'm doing. And that's been a really a nice learning thing for me doing videos for YouTube um, and things like that, because I'm actually watching myself create and seeing my process when I wouldn't otherwise do it. I'm just not even thinking about it. Um, so here I am being just mindful of color position. Have I got enough Things am I doing the challenge right, which is to create a Halloween layout and use the embellishment kit. So as you can see, I was pulling out some Pink Fresh Studio stickers there. That was that's the Office Hours collection, which has nothing to do with spookiness at all. But I knew that I could incorporate some of the elephant elements if I modified them. And here I am, I've got these cute little dear Lizzie enamel pieces, and I'm just adding a few things around there, and that's ticking off you know, what a part of my challenge. Oh, look, I've got my new little tool that broke. I was so devastated when that broke. And then a beautiful um, fellow scrapbooker. I had a crop on the weekend. I hosted a crop on the weekend. There was about 20 of us and we're scrapbooking. And one of them was a creative memories consultant. And she gives me my little tool that I love so much. I was so excited. So you'll start to see that little tool pop into my layouts again. It's such a valuable little little tool for me in positioning enamel dots and titles and getting things up when I like I've stuck something down and I want to maneuver it so that little tool I'm so happy about it's the little things in life that make you happy there you go there's that little orange element there that I wanted to pop in and help sort of settle down that big white section and here I am coming in with just some title words from the Dear Lizzie collection and putting some happy um, photo themed words around and just sort of adding those final little bits of gold you know and I think I'm really mindful I really want to use up my stash um, and those things that I want to hoard I'm going I'm trying not to hoard anymore and I'm putting them down and that's you know been lots of fun so here I am I was umming and ahhing whether I journal in white pen or black pen but I knew because I had my black border my black photo a black pop down the bottom, bottom corner I think would um, be really helpful for the layout as well. So I've just added my journaling there. If you like my layout, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Well, I hope you like my style and listening to me ramble on. <laughs> Um, and I'd love you to become a subscriber if I inspire you. And also, if you're interested in looking at the Hip Kit Club, the link is in my description below. I encourage you to check it out. We're a great family over there. We're really supportive. We love to share our techniques and thoughts and come and be a part of the community. All right, guys. Happy scrapping. Take care. Bye. Bye.